Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Shalom, Israel, Most High, Christ bless. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm Captain Josiah to my right, Officer Sear. So today's topic is going to be, can we drink? Can we drink? Meaning wine, liquor, strong drink, beer, whatever you want to call it. Okay, we're going to get into that today. Uh, because I know out in the Christian world, the majority, I'll say, or a percentage of them, I won't even say a majority, the percentage of them, even amongst Israel, okay, there's doctrines out there that we are not to drink or partake in those type of things, okay, meaning wine, the stronger drink and whatnot. So let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 3. Let's start at 1. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desired a good work. Mm -hmm. A bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife, vigilant. You know, this is off topic, but I saw a, a woman. Her name was Bishop So-and-so, right? This says the bishop must be the husband of one wife. What is that? How could a woman have the title of a bishop? A bishop S. Read on the husband of one wife, uh -huh. vigilant, sober, of good behavior. So it says a bishop must be sober. Okay. Sober meaning in excess. You're not to be drunk and so forth. But read on. Of good behavior, given to hospitality. Uh -huh. You have to be hospitable. Apt to teach. And you have to be able to teach as a bishop or as a leader. Read. Not given to wine. Not what? Given to wine. It says not given to wine. Meaning what? You're not uh, succumbed. You're not overtaken by wine. That's what it's talking about. But some will use the scripture to say you can't drink wine at all. Read it again. Not given to wine. Uh -huh. No striker. Not greedy of filthy lucre. But patient. Not a brawler. Not covetous. Okay. So now what we want to deal with is the not given to wine part. Go to uh, Ephesians real quick. Ephesians chapter 5. And let's read verse 18. Watch this. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. Wherein is what? Excess. Wherein is excess. It says, be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. You have exceeded the limit that you're supposed to stop at. It says, don't do that. that. That's what it means by being given to wine. Okay, you're in excess now. You're drunk now. We don't. But be filled with the spirit. It says, but be filled with the spirit. Now, that doesn't mean you can't drink. It says, don't drink in excess. Read it one more time. Verse 18. And be not drunk with wine, mm -hmm. wherein is excess. Uh -huh. so but... No. Is that it? But be filled with the Spirit. But be filled with the Spirit. Give me 1 Peter real quick. 1 Peter chapter 4. Uh, give me verse 3. 
the book of first Peter chapter four and verse three for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. So now these are things that we used to do. Okay. We're sp supposed to be coming out of these things uh, or had to overcome these things in this walk as Israelites. Read it one time. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. We wrought the work of the Gentiles in times past. Read on. When we walk in the lasciviousness, mm -hmm. lust, excess of wine. Excess of what? Wine. Excess of wine. Read on. Revelance, banqueting, and abominable idolatries. Okay, so with wine comes reveling, banqueting, and abominable idolatries. Okay, when you get drunk, people have these statements that they don't know what the hell they did the night before. Right. Right? You wake up somewhere on the floor, don't know how you got there. You in your car somewhere, don't Naked. know how you got there. Naked. Naked. You actually made it home and don't know how you got there. You know what I'm saying? Read that again. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. Uh -huh. When we walked in lasciviousness. When we walked in lasciviousness. Lust. Uh -huh. Excess of wine. So now, did we do those things in times past? Yes. Okay. Excess of wine. Does that mean you can't drink? No. It means don't drink in excess. Don't be drunker. Right. Come on. Revelings. Banqueting. And abominable idolatries. So now, give me uh, Sirach real quick. The book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus chapter 31. That's in their book called the Apocrypha. Okay. Ecclesiasticus chapter 31 verse 27. Watch this. The book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus chapter 31 verse 27. Wine is as good as life to a man. If it be drunk moderately. So now it says wine is as good as life to a man. If it's drunk moderately, not in excess. So wine is good if you drink it moderately. Come on. Real? Wine is as good as the life to a man if it be drunk modestly. Watch this. What life is then to a man that is without wine. Read it one more time. What life? what life is then to a man that is without wine? It says, well, what is life without wine? Okay. Meaning what? You really not living that well if you take a little sip. Right. Okay. You got to relax a little bit every now and then. That's what it's saying. What is life without a little bit of wine? Read on. For it, for it was made to make men glad. For wine was made to make men glad. Okay, the most I made these things to make us glad is to assist us. All right, read on. Wine measurably drunk mm -hmm. and in season. So now it's still a time, even though measurably drunk, it says in season. So it's a time to drink. It's a time not to drink. Okay, if you on your way out the door to go to work, is that time to, to take a little sip? No, you could get pulled over by the cops, right. get a breathalyzer. And now you're going to jail somewhere. Okay, so now the time to drink is when what you with brothers and so forth, or you at the house, you you done with your, your uh, days of work and whatnot. You just kick back at the house with the wife or whatever, take chilling, a little chilling yeah. out, right? Chilling out. That's in season right there. Not on your way to work, gonna take a little sip, all right, or leaving work to go home. Read on. Wine measurably drunk and in season bringeth gladness that of the heart. gladness of the heart. Come on. And cheerfulness of the mind. Watch this. But wine drunketh with excess. That's what it meant in, in Timothy when it says, don't be given to wine. Okay. It says wine drunketh with excess. Maketh bitterness of the mind. Uh -huh. With brawling and quarreling. Now you want to fight everybody. Okay. Now all of a sudden you got... Bigger muscles than everybody in the room. Okay, because you're drunk now. Read on. Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool. It says drunkenness increases the rage of a fool. Come on. Till he offend. Uh -huh. It diminishes strength and maketh wounds. Now you're coming home with black eyes, teeth knocked out of your mouth because you didn't mess with the wrong, the wrong brother. Okay. Because the wine got you there. Yeah, the wine got you there. Okay, now you think you got muscles now because you drunk. Read on. 
Rebuke not thy neighbor at the wine, and despise him not in his mirth. Uh -huh. Give him no despiteful words, and press not upon him with urging him to drink. It says, press not upon him, ur urging him to drink. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drink, 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 drink. You go to these uh, different parties out in the world, everybody's just here, 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 here. They want to see you drunk. Chugging contest. Yeah, chugging contest. They think it's funny. Okay, the Bible says don't do that. Don't urge anybody to drink, forcing them. Here, have another one, have another one, have another one. Don't do that. Okay, because they may force it on somebody that's a recovering alcoholic. Right. And you cause that brother or that sister to fall back in excess of wine, being drunk. Now right. they in the midst of sin. Okay. Read that from the top, uh, verse 27, one more time. Verse 27. Wine is as good as life to a man, if it be drunk moderately. What life is then to a man that is without wine? For it was made to make men glad. So now, right there, we can close the Bible. Okay. But it's more. Wine was made to make men glad. Right. So yes, you can drink wine measurably right. and in season. Now, give me uh, Matthew chapter 11. Okay. Matthew chapter 11, verse 19. Read 18. 18 and 19. The book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 18. For John came neither eating nor drinking. And they say, he have a devil. This is John the Baptist. Christ is saying, John came neither eating meat, excuse me, or drinking wine. John didn't eat meat or drink wine. Okay. And they said, this man got a devil on him. He's the devil. Read on. The son of man came eating and drinking. Wait a minute. Christ did what? Eating and and drinking. Christ is talking about himself. He called himself the son of man. He came eating meat and drinking wine. That's right. Christ drunk wine in moderation. Okay. He's telling you that out of his own mouth. Read it again. The son of man came eating and drinking. Mm -hmm. And they say. So now some people may say, no, no, no. They ain't talking about wine. He didn't drink wine. That's not what he's talking about. But read, watch. And they say, behold. A man gluttonous and a wine bibber. That's the proof right there. Okay. They tried to call him a wine bibber. Why? Because they saw him drinking wine. Right. He drank wine. He was not a drunkard. Was he a wine bibber? No, he was not. But they just called him that. Okay. They called him gluttonous and a wine bibber because he ate and drank. Okay. Read it one more time. The son of man came eating and drinking. Mm -hmm. And they say, behold, a man gluttonous. And a wine bibber. Come on. A friend of publicans and sinners. Mm -hmm. But wisdom is justified of her children. Right. So, yes, Christ did drink wine. Go to um, John real quick. I'm sorry, not John. Luke. The book of Luke. Um, I, I just want to further prove that when Christ said John came neither eating or drinking, that was talking about wine. I'm going to show you that. Luke chapter 1, verse 15. The book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 15. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord uh -huh. and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. Uh -huh. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. So now, did Christ have the Holy Ghost? Yes, sir. He did. So wine and strong drink had nothing to do with ha having or not having the Holy Ghost. This was just John. He didn't drink wine or strong drink. And it says he will have the Holy Ghost. Christ told you he came eating and drinking. And we know he had the Holy Ghost. Right. He was filled with the spirit of the Most High. Okay. So that didn't cause him to fall out the spirit because he drank. You understand? Read it one more time. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. Come on. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. Right. So John himself, he didn't drink wine or strong drink. Christ did. So you're going to have some on both sides of the coin, as they say. Okay. But it's not a sin to drink. Christ the Messiah, he drank. He drank wine. So now, the book of John is done. John chapter 2. And let's start at 1. The book of John chapter 2 and verse 1. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, uh -huh. and the mother of Jesus was there. Come on. And both Jesus was called 
and his disciples to the marriage. And when they had wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no wine. It says when they wanted wine, meaning they had ran out. Okay, Mary came to Christ and said, hey, listen, they out of wine. They out. They ran out. Read on. Jesus said unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mm -hmm. Mine hour is not yet come. Christ is saying his hour to show himself as who he was, was not yet come. He wasn't ready to start delving in miracles and so forth as of yet. But it was his time, as we're going to read. Read. His mother said unto the servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Mm -hmm. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Uh -huh. Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. So Christ said, take these water pots and fill them all the way up to the top. And that's what they did. Come on. And he said unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. All right. Now that they fool, y'all can put the caps on them, take them to the governor of the feast. Read on. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine mm -hmm. and knew not whence it was. So it's like, man, this is that good stuff right here. Okay. He didn't know where it came from. Read on. But the service which drew the water knew. Mm -hmm. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Come on. And saith unto him, Every man at the beginning do set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then they which is worse. So typically, you put the good wine out first. Once you get a little bit in your system, then you can bring out the other stuff. That's what he's saying. But y'all, y'all did the opposite. Y'all saved the best stuff for last. That's what he's talking about here. Read on. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. You see what he said? You kept the good wine till last. He, <laughs> he like, man, what y'all doing here? Y'all usually bring the good stuff out first. It's the good stuff right here. Yeah. Hold but y'all holding out. Hold out. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Y'all holding out on me. Read. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee. It says this beginning of miracles. This is one of, first, uh, one of Christ's first miracles right here. It was his first miracle. Okay, read it again. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee uh -huh. and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. So it says this, this is one of the things that manifested forth his glory. Okay. When he told his mother, my hour has not yet come. Okay. But this began his miracles and him showing who he was. All right. Now, so here we have the Messiah telling us that he drank wine. And they called him a wine bibber. We have him here turning water into wine. And now somehow we're still confused about whether we can drink it or not. Right. Right? Sure. We're supposed to be Christians, right? Followers of Christ. That's what they say. But we can't partake in the same things that he did. But now, it, if, you don't, if you don't elect to do it, that's right. fine. But you can't push. It's a doctrine that you cannot drink wine. Right. That's not in the Bible. Okay, you can't drink in excess and be drunk, but you can drink measurably. All right. Meaning what? In moderation. So now give me a uh, first Timothy real quick. First Timothy chapter five. Uh, verse 23. Yep. The book of first Timothy chapter five, verse 23. Drink no longer water. But use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. Read again. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. It says use a little wine. Use a little wine. Jump back to uh, chapter 3, 1 Timothy 3, and read verse 3. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 3. Not given to wine. No striker. So now, Paul says you're not to be given to wine. Jump back. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine. So that's not a contradiction. Okay. He's saying don't be given over to wine. Don't be on, on the street. Uh, you, you lost your house, your car, your job, your wife, your family, and everything because all you want is the bottle. You're not to be in that position. Okay. That mean, that's what it means to be given to wine. But he says, use a little wine. All right? There is no contradictions in the Bible. You just got to put the precepts together and get the proper understanding thereof. 
All right, read that one more time in First Peter 5. I mean, Timothy, excuse me. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 23. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thy often infirmities. And thy often infirmities. That's why it says wine was made to make men glad. So when you get off, you didn't, you didn't work 8, 10, 12, 14 hours. You want to get off work, relax a little bit, have a little bit of wine. You could do that. Right. Okay. Go to Deuteronomy 14. Deuteronomy 14 and uh, verse 21. Let me see. Jump to the point. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get to the point. 26. Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 26. And now, now this, this is going into tithing in the Old Testament. Tithing was never money, okay? Tithing was crops, oil, wine, strong drink, which we're going to read right here. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 26. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. Uh -huh. So the money that you were supposed to tithe, you sold those goods, you got the money in your hand. Now, this is telling you, take that money and go to Jerusalem and do what? And thou shalt bestow that, that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. Uh -huh. For oxen. For oxen. So you can buy ox with that money. Or for sheep. You can buy sheep with that money. Or for wine. You can buy wine with that money. Or for strong drink. And you can buy strong drink with that money, meaning liquor. Okay. Wine or strong drink. Now, if it was a sin, why would the most I be telling you to go buy it? Right. The same way you can buy ox, sheep, you can buy cattle, wine, cattle, you can buy strong drinking wine. Read on. Or whatsoever thy soul desire, uh -huh. and thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household. You see that? So all those things were for us to rejoice in, okay? To come together as believers and, and take care of what the Levites and so forth at that particular time. But the point is wine and strong drink. You could buy those things not only in the Old Testament, we read it in the New Testament as well. OK, so with that, Israel, we say Shalom. Most high Christ bless. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.